Gothic romance is a very time-honored tradition that skates really close to horror. Gothic romance was invented as a genre in literature around the end of the 18th century. It can have the trappings of a horror film or a horror story, but it's ultimately the story of a love affair. It was a literary form that came as a reaction against the rational and the academic. It was crazy, it was exuberant, it was quite violent and sort of lurid. They do not need to be confused with Gothic horror. Gothic horror does fully embrace supernatural as part of the modern narrative, and the Gothic romance has at its core a dark love story. The first work of Gothic fiction is The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. At the center of the story is a building, a fortress, a castle with dark secrets. The idea of a crumbling relic which houses some sort of supernatural history is something that's completely interwoven into the fabric of Gothic romance. Allerdale Hall is definitely one of those places that is haunted by the horrible things that have happened within its walls. But how do you manage this house? Gothic romance, like many other genres, comes very close to fairy tale, the darkest of fairy tales. Often repeated in the fairy tale, the journey of a young woman into adulthood. Uh, you can find it in Alice in Wonderland or you can find it and the Snow Queen, the youth journeying into adulthood through a rite of passage that involves a journey through darkness. From Radcliffe to Du Maurier, there is a young woman at the center of it who is curious and open-hearted and really purely innocent, who is somehow taken advantage of by this, the more cynical aspects of life, but survives. You're all alone, Edith. Oh, Edith, you know, she's very strong-willed. Unfortunately, like, the more she loses, the more it benefits her in a strange way, or sort of builds her character. This movie is very much her journey, from uncertainty to getting her feet under her as a person and as a woman, and finding out just exactly what it is she's made of. Edith learns the living are much scarier and pose a much stronger threat than the dead do. And in fact, the dead guide her towards something or away from something that is much more present in reality. If we're dealing with facets of Gothic romance, this idea of mysterious figures of men, this is very true to the spirit of Gothic romance. What Guillermo does is he draws everybody into that magnetism and then reveals his true hand and you realize Thomas Sharp is a very complicated man who has a secret, long wished for dream, is he wants to leave. He wants to get out. He wants to leave Allerdale Hall. The house is the center of his torment. He's hurtling towards a kind of a destiny which is to get out. Edith helps him realize that that's what he needs. from the mansion house to a lot of the themes of loss and death and tragic love. The whole world is steeped in Gothic romance. Everything Lucille does, she does for love. I think of like a horror film, a, a scary film where there's so much hate and anger. Hate and anger only come from love. Every emotion has its equal part magnified. So as strong as the vengeance, as the revenge, as the hate, that's how strong the love has to be. And Guillermo creates that balance. Guillermo del Toro is the primary interpreter of Gothic romance in contemporary cinema. 
His fingerprint as an artist and his ability essentially to make stories that seem to deal with the supernatural and make them intensely emotionally real. You never feel like you're just in a ghost story. You feel like you're telling a story about real people. The real horror comes from the human heart and the human spirit. That is a different slant I've always had in Devil's Backbone, in Kronos, Pan's Labyrinth, that goes counter to everything you normally see in the horror genre.